you now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello, friends, and welcome once again to the program Jack Van Empe presents. We are so delighted that we can be with you, especially especially me right now, because we are celebrating Jack Van Empe's birthday. We've just passed it a little bit, but uh, I'm just so happy that we could remember a life that is a miracle. You're going to, I did something a little bit different. I put a life story together on video, and Jack, you were kind of surprised. I surprised yeah, him about yeah. this. And you're going to see him from the very beginning, when he was a little child, right on up to where we are today. But Jack, God has blessed you Ooh. so much. May I say a word? I started with Billy Graham, Youth for Christ. And in those days, <laughs> I was reaching youth for Christ, and now I've come to the point where I'm reaching old folks for God. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm an older than all, and people write me, give me their age, and I say, they think they're old. <laughs> they should find out how close I am to 90, but I'm going to give it I got, everything I got till Jesus calls me home. And I've been through every illness there is. And they said, I'd never preach again, but here I am. Praise the Lord. You know, age doesn't matter because he deals with things that are relevant right now to every life. You know, if you're 16, uh, 20 years old, what we have to give you will be relevant to your life. How wonderful to know that the Bible is relevant to all of our lives. And so I trust you'll get a blessing out of this presentation Amen. of Jack Van Impey and his life story. Amen. Anyone familiar with Jack knows how much he enjoys life and loves to have a good time. It's difficult to find a picture of him where he isn't smiling. Here's one of his first. And this one where he's practicing his Billy Graham pose as a young Bible school student. He's always ready for a good laugh and not afraid to provide one at his own expense. It's just the way he is. And it's this self-effacing, down-to-earth, real people quality that has drawn so many to his ministry and to Christ. His work began when he was just 17, and his parents announced they were traveling to the mission fields of Belgium. One can only imagine his feelings as they turned to leave and he realized he'd have to make it completely on his own. He'd already gained quite a reputation as a musician, so those initial years of his work found him performing on his accordion with the likes of Billy Graham, George Beverly Shea, Cliff Barrows, Leonard Thompson, and at Youth for Christ meetings. These early years in Bible college laid the foundation for another enduring Van Empey trademark, his amazing memory. To this day, his gift for memorization and rapid-fire recitation of verses continues to fascinate his viewers and effectively teach as few other techniques can. He'd prepared himself well. He had scripture committed to memory. He had his music. What else could a dedicated young minister ask for? Of course, a wife. And so typical of the Lord, he provided just the right woman to blend perfectly with a man. Throughout the years, they've shared it all. The music, the ministry, and the cat. For up to 40 weeks per year, 12 years in a row, it was life on the road in church crusades as ambassadors for Christ. This was followed by area-wide city crusades, television specials, radio, and now weekly television programs. All the time standing shoulder to shoulder with Jack, Rexella has provided the perfect blend of helpmate, homemaker, confidant, and truest friend. The two are inseparable and as single-minded in their dedication to the Lord as two people can be. As Dr. Van Empey has said, I wouldn't be in the ministry today without her. And to be sure, the ministry would have taken on a much different look without Rexella. Area-wide crusades in the state's top 260. Many of these were broadcast as nationwide television specials from places like Carnegie Hall, the stage of the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, 
the Waikiki Shell in Honolulu, the Los Angeles Convention Center, and many others. This U.S. crusade circuit was interrupted from time to time with a worldwide outreach that began in South America and took the Vanapies to 50 countries. The early 70s saw the start of a radio outreach that within several years was being translated into 83 languages around the globe. During this flurry of Christian evangelism, some 10 million people had attended the Vanapies' mass crusades with 600,000 being saved or restored to Christ. Then it all abruptly stopped. The Lord had shown Jack that it was time to speak out about a disease growing in the body of Christ, a disease which threatened to tear it apart. In his book, Heart Disease in Christ's Body, and in a courageous keynote address to his peers at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention, Dr. Vanapi exposed the senseless discrimination and separatist attitudes which had infiltrated Christianity. This lone voice speaking out for true Christian unity and fellowship with all of God's people would forever have as its centerpiece Christ's unfathomable love for all who believe. This new attitude demanded to be shouted from the rooftops. And so in 1980, Jack Vanapi presents a new weekly television program that was born. It combined the talents of Rex Sella as masterful interviewer and first lady of sacred song with doctors in comparable teaching style and powerful messages. The program sometimes originated from global venues like London and the Holy Land. Those hour-long specials continued as well from places like Washington, D.C. and Israel. These new endeavors were a resounding success. The ministry was now reaching more people in a single telecast. The Lord blessed the Vanapi's faithfulness with some of his own, and in 1988, a new Jack Vanapi Presents hit the airwaves. The program's format, unique in all of television, features Rex Sella reading up-to-the-minute news reports and headlines, introducing all the visuals, including Doctor's favorites, the cartoons. Then Doctor takes over for his unique analysis, clarification, and biblical commentary. This is where his years of diligent study, evidenced by his 17 doctorates and his amazing memory, take over. In a blizzard of quotes from sacred scripture, he can humble the arrogant or bless the believer. Nobody does it better. Rexella, always the pivot point of the anchor team, adds just the right tender touch of her own. And it's off to a new topic. In 2008, doctors Jack and Rexella decided to give the program a fresh new look. From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents. The truth in news and commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. God needed a champion, someone that had the courage to stand up to a president, a pope, world and church leaders, someone to take a stand against the apostasy in the church. Dr. Van Empey said America's greatest need is to reclaim and restore biblical Christianity. Presently, many ministers are attempting to eliminate the old-time religion. Doctrinal sermons have been replaced by feel-good messages. The church needs doctrine and a revival. Let's restore the preaching of God's Word, the singing of the old hymns, the Ten Commandments, and God's demands for holy living. Christianity's foundation and major theological points have been destroyed by what the Bible calls doctrines of demons. Dr. Van Empey is blowing the trumpet, warning these are the final signs and dangers facing Christianity in the 21st century. The Bible warns that ministers will arise who will betray the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible calls them apostates, antichrists, and super deceivers. They are enemies of the gospel and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dr. Jack Van Empey cautioned, Bible translators have removed 
91 verses claiming Christ as the Son of God from the Holy Bible, a version created for Muslims. The top leaders of Islam are talking about taking over the world. They believe that one day the flag of Islam will fly over the White House. They have gone through the streets of London with loudspeakers, telling people how they're going to take over. And folks, it's happening. Dr. Van Epi said, Wake up! Trouble is ahead for America, Canada, and all the world. Soon a global leader and his religious Christian apostate partner will create the new world order and a world religion under the united banner of Islam and Christianity. Together they rule the nations and all religions via Sharia law. Dr. Van Epi thoroughly searched scores of documents and articles to prepare the citizens of the world as to the devastating results this final law will bring upon the nations, where it will forcefully be instituted and controlled. Christian leaders are embracing Sharia law. This is why God needs a man with courage, a champion, Dr. Van Epi was raised from his deathbed coma. God had other plans for his greatest challenge ever. Muslim leaders planned to erect 135 billboards throughout the U.S. stating that the Jesus of Islam and the Jesus of Christianity were the same. Dr. Van Epi knew from his lifetime of study the reading of thousands of volumes, and the memorization of 18,000 Bible verses, that the Islamic Jesus was a created fraud. The Christian Jesus, the eternal God, the second member of the Trinity, the creator of the world, the one and only Savior, and the coming King. God needed a prophet. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are about to ride. Global devastation is on the horizon. The 21 judgments are about to take place on the earth. Dr. Van Empey has spent every waking moment praying for a message from his past that could help his faithful followers and partners more than any work ever prepared during his 70 years of ministry. In the light of Christ's imminent return, he studied slowly and searchingly for God's guidance. We are the generation who, after 20 centuries, are about to experience the greatest event in world history, the return of Christ for 1,000 years, and then for all eternity, as heaven is transferred to earth. Congratulations, Dr. Jack Van Epi, good and faithful servant. Oh, I know your hearts have been blessed by what God can do with a life given over to him. And Jack, praise the Lord that you were willing to give all your talent to him. First of all, with your accordion and then beginning to go into the ministry like you did. It was just amazing. I do want to add one thing. You've just been listening to the voice of Dr. Charles Oman, our announcer. He was our announcer for many years on television. And, uh, you know, Jack, as I began thinking about your life, mm. I couldn't help but think back about when we first met, and I've mentioned this before in our program, the first message I ever heard him give was a message on prophecy. Yeah. You felt that God had yeah. called you to be a prophet more yeah. uh, in our day and age yeah. and tell about things going on in the world, how it connected with the Bible. That's why you memorized so much of the Bible. Oh, I have memorized over 18,000 verses during the years. Yes. Know them. And you know what that means? Because chapter is one thing, verse is the other. That means I've memorized 36,000 numbers. Oh. And I had this coma for six months. I came up, I didn't even know my name. Six weeks later, the Lord brought back all of the verses. I know them. But boy, once in a while I have trouble finding the right number. <laughs> 36,000 I have to search for. So. Please bear witness with me because uh, three years from now I'll be 90 and I've been preaching 72 years and by then 75 years for the Lord and I'm not going to quit. I've been through it. The doctor said you'll never do it again, but he's brought me back. And if I have to crawl out to this set, here this is in my office, I'm going to do it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for 
touching my body. Amen. Well, you know, I couldn't help but think about uh, the message that I heard him preach at our church, as I mentioned, before we ever met. He was already in his ministry. And some of the things, friends, that he spoke about back then are really happening now, and the fulfillment of it is happening right now. I'll never forget, that night he spoke about Israel and how there is going to be a huge battle over there as the Russian uh, army marched down from the north. That all stuck in my head. Jack, it's happening right now. Russia has become a great nation, a huge nation, and there is a hatred there between those northern countries of Israel for Israel. America is Israel's best friend, and certainly our president's trying to put us together. But is there going to be, Jack, that northern army come down on Israel in the last years? And that's Russia, Rick. So now, when I was with Dr. Jerry Falwell, I announced I'd preach that message for his Sunday morning service. And over 10,000 arrived. Yes. And he was shocked. He says, my God's going to use you. You've got something there. And he said, do you have any partners supporting? I said, no. I get a love offering wherever I go. And I was over 800 uh, one-week-long crusades. And I'd get an offering, but many times it was very small. And I had a hard time. But this great man of God said, start asking partners to help you for $10 a month and for the next two years while you're doing it, I'm going to pay every dime of your salary. Much better than the churches I'd even received offerings from. Anyway, it happened. And oh, how good they've been. And my first night then after the Crusades was with Billy Graham. I'll tell you, what a man of God. And uh, oh, you talk about heartache. I have memory so much scripture. Every message. And you're going to be hearing some of these videos from the Crusades. Over 200. I said 180. I just discovered from what I was preaching as we named what number it was that it's over 200 citywide Crusades with 10 to 12 million attendants. And over 7 million souls Christ from everything we've done. And we're gunning for another seven million in my next last three years of life if he lets me live that long. But I want to tell you something. It's been great. Great. And just recently, because we've got the same thing as Billy Graham now has, and we've got a world headquarters. You can come and visit and see 12,000 volumes of red and volumes from all the great leaders of the world and uh, pictures of the great ministers who backed the Crusades. What a time you're going to have. And you can come and spend a few days just to see what God has done for us. And we'll have all the videos, 4,000 of them for the past. And you can spend hours in our little chapel seating 50 people watching it. But anyway, I said all that to say this. One day I got a letter from Billy and I cried my heart out. He said, Jack, you started with me as a 16-year-old. And he said, now, I'll watch you weekly, and I'm retired. And I am envious of your Bible knowledge. I cried my heart out. That meant so much to me. What a man of God he is. I want you to know who I am, not a fly-by-night. I've been with men like Billy Graham, the greatest. You can trust me, believe me. But I want to get back, Jack, to that question that I just asked you. Uh, you've always preached on prophecy, and in fact, uh, starting next week, we are going to be giving you some headlines from around the world once again, showing that the Lord is coming back very, very soon, and what's happening, how the connection of what you see in your headlines, in your papers, and uh, here on TV or whatever, see on YouTube, whatever, is connected with the coming of the Lord. Oh, man. But Jack... Is there going to be, really, you know, you hear about the Battle of Armageddon, but is there going to be a Battle of Armageddon before too much longer? Okay, let me tell you something. The next two months here on YouTube, I'm going to mention every Bible sign in the Bible prophetically. 
Wonderful. that Jesus is coming. They've all been fulfilled. And people said, it's here. No, no. The final two signs had to happen. Israel had to become a nation again after 2,500 years of not having a nation because of the hatred of the anti-Semites of this world. But in 1948, they came home and pulled up their six-pointed flag of David. Amen. And then in 1967, they took Jerusalem's capital, Tel Aviv. And God says, these are the last two signs and I'm going to prove it. Starting the 19th of April. And for seven weeks, you're going to hear the most dynamic messages you've ever preached because it says when you see those two signs, you're the only generation in history to see them. That's the generation that's going to be alive at my return. You won't know the day and the hour, but you will know when it's near. How near, Jesus? Even at the door. And I'm going to be preaching that message that it's at the door. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Sixty years ago, and you've heard me say this many times, I preached the great message, the coming war with Russia. And lo and behold, I had record-breaking crowds around the world. And then I didn't preach it for a while. But the details I didn't preach in many places. But I had this great meeting in. Los Angeles, the great crusade hall there. Right. Thousands per night. Right. And that night I preached the actual one I preached 60 years before. Mm. And guess what? In that I realized just as I watched it a couple of weeks ago, I gave every detail of every one of the great leaders of America who said it. And I took all the geographical books to prove from the Bible that these things, two to four thousand years of age, are the nations that just appeared in the Wall Street Journal. My. When they said, this is the nations involved in World War III. I said, I'm going to tell the world, starting April the 19th through June the 16th, who these nations are. It's here, and when it happens, we're gone. In the twinkle of an eye, for God said, as I said last week, I will keep you from the Greek word ek, not through preservation, out of the hour of temptation that's coming to the whole world. Well, how's that going to happen? The rapture. The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archer, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then, get it? We which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them, with the dead, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the twinkling of an eye. And that is called the rapio, rapture. And it's about to happen, ladies and gentlemen, because I've got 120 articles that my great leader, uh, my CEO, uh, Dr. Vansel, has put together. And every one of those nations is getting ready for the great Armageddon mentioned in Revelation 16, 16. And when it happens, we're gone. But then seven years later, after the rewards are passed out for all of our service, he returns to set up his kingdom. And you know what it's going to be called? Listen, you Jewish people, I love you. God loves you. It is going to be called the Judea Christian Eternal ha! New World Order. The Jew and the Christian together, the two groups God loves most, Jews and Christians, united forever. Oh, I love you Jewish brothers. And you've got a great future coming with your Christian brothers. Now, i got news for you. One of the videos is going to prove that the Old and New Testaments are similar. And nobody has ever preached it. I will be preaching it starting the 17th of April. Mm. Well, you know, God does love the Jewish people. God does love the Christians. But God loves everybody. God so loved what? I love this verse of Scripture when I was a little girl. It's the first one I learned. 
John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But the Jewish people of the Old Testament were his chosen people because those were the people that, that God chose his son would be among. Yeah. A Jewish wonderful virgin, the Virgin Mary. But how wonderful to know that God loves us all and he sent his son to die for you. Now you're perhaps not Jewish, perhaps you're uh, another race of people, but God loves you. Oh, let me add something. All right, I will. God says in this book, you have not chosen me as Christians. I have chosen you and ordained you to be saved before the foundation world. He's God. He knows everything. He's omniscient. He knew what you were going to do. And so you also are the chosen. Now, anyone who can be saved, if they want to be saved, whosoever will may come. But he knew the ones that would come in. He chose them. Now, the Jews today and Christians are in all nations. So they're coming out of every nation when he says, come up hither. Revelation 4.1. And it's going to be so near. We are the generation. This is the final hour. Get ready. And we're not guys in white sheets like Willie Miller had uh, sitting out there in the uh, 1800s. And it failed. He didn't know his Bible as he should, even though he started the Seventh-day Adventist movement. Well, you know, Jack, I was just thinking about the disciples as uh, just before the Lord ascended, he said to his disciples, go into all the world, all the world, and preach the gospel. How wonderful it is that now we, through YouTube, and now by means of radio, we have the possibility of reaching the world. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Oh, Rexella, the Lord loves me. He died for me. I want to be ready for that coming of the Lord. I'm asking you to pray this prayer with Jack. And Jack, our time is so very, very short right now. It just flies by when we're on air with our people. But will you pray this prayer, asking the Lord to be your Savior, come into your life. Jack. You say, Well, am I one of the chosen ones? Listen, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Yes, you are. And if you pray that now, you can be sure that when he says, Revelation 4, 1, come up hither to Mr. Tribulation, Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, you'll be ready. Amen. Father, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, you were sent by your Father to get me to open my heart to you. And I see it all now. Horrendous days are about to come. And I want to be with you, Jesus, in a place called heaven, in safety for the seven years before we return. The armies of heaven with Jesus to rule and reign on this earth, not only for a thousand years, but forever. When heaven will be moved to earth and it's coming soon. Thank you, Jesus. As I receive it, I'm ready. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. If you prayed that prayer, please write to me. I'll send you that wonderful little book of First Steps in a New Direction. And it will help you as you grow in the Lord. I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. Witness for Christ with your life as well as with your lips. We'll look forward to seeing you again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.